No offense, dude, but your gimmick kinda sucks. No one wants to be saved by a knight in armadillo armor. So right off the bat, we actually have one of my favorite stage songs in the game. I really love this song because it's fast-paced, it's catchy, and it goes really well with these... minecart segments? I don't really know what this thing is supposed to be, but it, uh... Hmm, that was weird. But it only has a single wheel, so I guess it's some sort of bizarre unicycle? As for the stage theme itself, not really fond of it, but then again I don't really like cave themes in general, especially in 2D games, because usually it's just like, oh hey, here are some rocks, this looks interesting, right? But I will give this level points, because it does sort of start off in this factory area, but as you go along, uh, things get less mechanical, they set up less, and it's more just the caves, and I do kind of like that progression, it is pretty neat. Unfortunately, it's still a cave, so I don't like it that much. As for these mini-bosses, they're not too bad to kill, uh, especially if you get behind them. However, I can't really kill them quick enough to get a certain item when we face another one of those guys. They do have a weakness, but unfortunately it's not Shotgun Ice. You need to kill them pretty quickly, and Shotgun Ice just isn't going to do that trick. But we can get this item. Now, this is a sub-tank, which is similar to the E-tanks from the uh, Classic series. However, there are only four of these in the game, so of course they work a bit differently in that they're not one-use items. Instead, you actually fill them up by picking up spare uh, energy containers, or pellets, or whatever you want to call them. Basically, if you're at max health like I am now, or was, if I hadn't gotten hit like a moron, I would have actually uh, gotten some energy for my sub-tank and then you can use that energy later on to heal yourself when you actually need it. I like it a bit more than E-Tanks, actually, because, you know, it allows me to actually pick up health and there's actually a reason for it. I mean, I'll just pick up health I don't need anyway, but that's just because I'm weird, but it's actually justified in this case. So it's not like you're just gonna get really good drops for nothing, you can actually get large energy pellets and they're still helpful. So I, I do like that. It's a, it's a good gameplay design, though. If you suck at the game, it's going to be hard to fill up E-Tanks, because you'll just be getting hit by everything, and then you won't be able to fill them up, so... You do have to play somewhat competently, and then you'll be rewarded later by having health. Though then again, I guess it's not too much different than putting E-Tanks in tricky places. Not too much different. It is a little bit different, though. These segments can be a little bit annoying, especially if an enemy flies in and you haven't actually killed them, because... It's really hard to kill things yourself here. I mean, you'll run over most things, but some things like the uh, bats or that bird that hit me earlier, yeah, those can nick you, unfortunately, but what are you gonna do? Anyway, this is the guy I was talking about. You do have to stay behind him to kill him, because unfortunately at one point he will destroy a little path we'll need to get to a certain item. And I think you can kill him without it, but unfortunately I just barely wasn't able to kill him, but... I think dash shots will actually work, but I wasn't successful in doing that there because I just kept running into him like a moron. But we'll be back for that when we have that dude's weakness later on. I do actually really like this uh, unicycle segment because this one is pretty uh, radical, I guess. I mean, this is 90s as hell. We're just fucking soaring off the cliff and we're pretty much at the end of the stage and huh, I wonder why that was there. I wonder if something important was supposed to be there. You never know. But, regardless, that's the end, so, jumping through the boss door, we have something that wasn't designated to be the first or second boss, or whatever. So, this dude is actually not necessarily difficult without his weakness, but he's really annoying. Because if you hit him when he's attacking, he'll absorb your shot and do that. Now, that's not the worst thing to dodge in the world, but it prolongs the battle so much. If you have his weakness, you can actually just completely remove that gimmick. He won't actually be able to shield himself, because he'll just get rid of his armor completely, but... At the moment, we only have Shotgun Ice, which I like slightly better, because I think it allows me to hit him without him absorbing my shots a bit easier than uh, if I just used a standard charge shot. 
But yes, unfortunately this battle is pretty slow and kind of tedious, and given how little health I have at the moment, uh, this can actually be tough, since if he hits me at all, then, well, I don't have much room for error is the thing. So we just kind of have to be really careful and wait around so he doesn't absorb shots, which is kind of stupid because why is it that he can guard one? Well, okay, he's firing pretty slowly, so I guess it kind of makes sense that he'd be able to predict a shot and char or, uh, guard, but still. It is really annoying that he can do that. You'd think it would only be when he was standing around would make this less annoying. And unfortunately, Shotgun Ice only does, like, a single hit a point of damage, right? Yeah, really only a single point of damage. So, we're gonna run out of this weapon faster than we're gonna kill him. Really sucks, but we don't have any good weapons to use against him. So yeah, I, I think you get the point. This battle is incredibly quick if you have his weakness, painfully slow if you don't have his weakness, which is something I don't really care for. I mean, it's not... it's obviously not impossible to beat him without his weakness, but it's just so much more annoying to do it without it that it's kind of annoying. I mean, it was a bit better and different in earlier Mega Man games, that sort of thing, you know. Some bosses would be more difficult without the weakness, but they wouldn't die this slowly is the thing. Because this is just taken forever. Even with charge shots, he just does not go down, so if you decide to go with him first, bad luck to you. Sorry about that. Looks like you should have gone to someone else first, even though these stages are even though these stages are supposed to be tackled in any order, you you can't do this one before you get his weakness, otherwise you're treated to a really Boring, terrible boss. I, I don't like him. At all. But that's what I get for doing this in a clockwise order. Yeah, I wanted to go from stage to stage, because I, I don't want Mega Man to have to travel all over the place. I sort of want to, you know, fluidly move around from area to area. It does kind of screw me out of certain items, but, you know, we'll go to the closest stage. That's, that's basically how I'm going to do the order this time. I usually like to go by whatever I think the most important mission is, but there's no specific mission in this game, so I'm just going from level to level. Not really going to use the boss weaknesses on the uh, first battles anyway, so it's not like uh, weapon weaknesses matter the first time around. And with this we get Rolling Shield, which is actually a pretty cool attack. Armored Armadillo, you can guard yourself all you want, but no matter what, you can't guard what's in your heart. Well, you're also dead, but the point still stands.